chest has been your can come into the temple as well. The can put the chest there and come and sit there. Okay, so, and I'll put there you are. If I have a Munna, I can get the better thing. Zorinas, Bhakti, Vinga, Vinash, Ska, Narshima Maharaj. Haribo! So, I think Maharaj has not been here for a long time. So, shall we give Maharaj a big Haribo? Haribo! So, Maharaj, if you don't have a spring inside, Pede Patro and the Rey Rumba Santusha Patare. So, I want to make a mother chief, so our best part of Allah. And we also have devotees from Jagannath Mandir. Okay, Vishwar Prabhu, a senior devotee. And then we have the youth, Prabhu Pralat Prabhu from Jagannath Mandir. And another youth from Singapore. Okay, Singapore, Kishore Prabhu. Okay, the company and we have got Gokul Prabhu also. Okay, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, shall we just hear the discourse from Maharaj? Yes. Yes, but it is not. Maharaj Peter has got it. Maharaj, that is Saturday's. Maharaj, you can choose. Okay, I'll just speak. Okay. 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 Hare Krishna. Nice to see our Saramban devotees again. Back in Saramban after the lockdown. <laughs> so I see some changes here, of course. A lot more dogs outside than this. <laughs> I never saw so many dogs there before, and so they seem to be breeding. Anyway, it's very nice. Saramban, fresh air here. <laughs> the air here is much better than in Kuala Lumpur. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So today, of course, is the auspicious day. It's the Tiro Bhav Mahotsav of His Divine Grace. Śrīla Bhakti Siddhānta Sarasati Thakur Prabhupāda. Śrīla Bhakti Siddhānta Sarasati Prabhupāda left the world. It, it, it was on the 31st of December in the year 1936. And at that time Śrīla Bhakti Siddhānta Sarasati was in the Gaudiamat temple in Calcutta. He departed from the body in the Calcutta temple, which is in, you know, they have a they have a very nice marble temple there in Bara Bazaar in Calcutta, north part of Calcutta. It's a marble temple. It's a beautiful place. Very well done. It was built by one man, one rich man, one disciple. He built the whole place paid for everything. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada departed in that place. He had not been well. He'd been traveling and preaching constantly and he just was coming back from Jagannath Puri and he came to Calcutta and he caught fever and as a result of the fever he departed from the world. Uh, it is said, Jivava Marava Sadhu. 
For the sadhu, it doesn't matter whether he lives or whether he dies. Because he's living for the service of Krishna and when he leaves the body, he will go on to serve Krishna some other place. So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati was aware that he was departing from the world and he had given instructions to his disciples. He was telling them things like follow in the footsteps of Rupa and Raghunath and at, when he, as he was leaving the body he requested one of his disciples to sing uh, Sri Rupa Manjari Pada, yes. And the person he had seen was one of the, the disciples who was not really Kirtanir, <laughs> but he selected him because he considered him to be more devotional than the others. So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati uh, was the seminal son of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. One of the devotees asked me this morning about uh, who was giving, uh, what, what, what were the instructions which Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati got from his spiritual master. But actually the person who gave the instructions was actually Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Bhaktivinoda Thakur was the seminal father of Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati. And Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati constantly associated with Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And he'd been, from his childhood, he had been trained by him in the teachings, in the philosophy of Krishna consciousness and Gaudiya Vaishnavism. And Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati followed. He carried out and implemented the message of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's preaching was mainly in the villages because of course Bhaktivinoda Thakur was uh, like a long time before. It was 1896 and 1880s, 1890s Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur was preaching. So India was much more rural. People were living much more in the countryside than they are today. And Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur was doing most of his preaching in these places. And that's why you have things like the Namhata, which is the system marketplace for preaching the holy name to go into the villages and to organize the people in the villages for the preaching of Krishna consciousness. However, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, his preaching came a little after Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Actually, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, he had been initiated from Srila Gorkishordas Babaji, but Gorkishordas Babaji was a Babaji. He was not preaching. He was simply doing his bhajan and uh, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he departed from the world like 1912 and then Gorky Shodas Babaji departed like 1913. So just like within a year, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati lost both his seminal father and his spiritual father. And so from that time on, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati had to take the lead. Although Bhaktivinoda Thakur had many children, but it was Bhimo Prasad who became Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati. He was the one who was most active and he was the one who was with Bhaktivinoda Thakur constantly assisting him, serving him, helping him. Sometimes, however, Bhaktivinoda Thakur would send him away. 
like one time he sent him to go and live in Mayapur because Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur had built the temple at Mayapur which, is, which we call the Yoga Peak, the place where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in this world. Right? Yoga meaning union, so the place where the, the, the Lord came into this world, the Yoga Peak. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur had established the temple there and at one point he had Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati go there and live there and take care of the temple. And now in those days there was, there was nothing else there in Mayapur. It was just jungle, really jungle. And if there was some, there was a lot of people over in Navadri, but on Mayapur, very less people, not many people at all. So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, he was living there, taking care of the temple. And later on, Bhaktivinoda Thakur departed, and Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati took his sannyas. And he took sannyas from a, the picture of his spiritual master. And it, it was a picture of his spiritual master, but his spiritual master actually manifested in front of him. And his spiritual master then awarded him the sannyas order of life. So that was something, uh, that was an innovation. Bhaktivinoda Thakur never took sannyas. Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he, at, at the end of his life, he was more doing bhajan, just chanting the holy name. But he would say, if you get a horse, put me on the horse and take me for preaching. So that was the mood of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, he had that mood also to preach, to preach the glories of the holy name and to go everywhere. And he, he did it very powerfully. Of course, just in India, they did not have much success outside of India. Of, India was much bigger in those days because India included uh, like Burma and also Bangladesh and Pakistan. It was all part of India. Nowadays it's divided so much into different countries. And so Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati was sending people around, opening centers and preaching to people. He would meet also different kings and rulers because at that time there were still rulers, there were still, the, the, the royalty was still there. They had their royal palaces and their kingdoms and so on. And Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati would preach to these people. And he sent people to Europe. He sent people to England to preach. Not only did he send them there, he supported the people to go there. He sent funds to them. Just like Srila Prabhupada gave funds for the devotees to go to Bangladesh and Nepal. In 1977, Srila Prabhupada was in Mayapur and the devotees had gone to visit Bangladesh and Nepal. And they were telling Srila Prabhupada how there are many Hindus there and how they were wanted the devotees to come there and to preach to them and to have programs and make temples there. But they said, Prabhupada is very poor there. How will we ever do it? The people have no money to support us. How can we ever go there? So Prabhupada said, I will give the funds. And Prabhupada arranged to give money every month for the maintenance of the preaching 
in Bangladesh and in Nepal. So the same thing happened, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, he had done that when he sent people to Europe. Although he was living in India in the 1920s like that, there was not much money, but he sent people to go to Europe, England, Germany, and they preached there, and they, they got some response, not a great response, but some response. Even some people, one German man had come to India, he came there and he got initiation from Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati. He went back to Germany and he preached. And some other people in England, they had also uh, taken up something of the preaching mission in England, but they had not actively preached. They'd made a small center, but they didn't know how to actually preach Krishna consciousness. Not the way Prabhupada did it, of course, you know, which was send out Sankirtan parties, chanting and dancing and book distribution. So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, he also had a strong interest in book distribution. And it was him who coined the phrase Brihat Medanga, the big Medanga. This Medanga drum can be heard for a few blocks. But the Brihad Medanga, the printing press, can be heard all over the world. So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati was very eager. In the mood of his father, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he also encouraged book publication and p distribution and they were even publishing a daily newspaper. Every day they had a newspaper called, I think it was called Nadia Prakash. So people were surprised that, oh, you have a daily newspaper? How is it possible? But Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati said to them, in Kaukara, there are six or seven daily newspapers and they are simply giving the news of Calcutta. Our newspaper is the news of the spiritual world. The spiritual world is three times greater than this whole material manifestation. One little city, Calcutta, is having six or seven daily newspapers and you're complaining because I'm printing one daily newspaper with the news of the spiritual world. He said, we could print a newspaper every second, but there are no customers. This is the problem. So, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati very much encouraged the devotees to write articles about Krishna consciousness, right? Did any of you write? Did you do some writing? Did you write something? Write an essay about Krishna consciousness? We have, you know, maybe you're Tamil educated, you can write in Tamil. We have our Tamil magazine published in Chennai. Or if you write in English, we have also English, Back to Godhead magazine. Even they don't publish, there's no harm. If you write, we write for purification. We don't write just to get published, but we write for our own purification. So, we, we do encourage the devotees, you know, write. Ex write about your own realizations. Just like when we have Vyasa Puja, we have to all write an offering, right? Do you write an, an offering for your Guru Maharaj, Vyasa Puja? Everyone should. And for Prabhupada's Vyasa Puja, everyone should also write. So you should write for your own spiritual master, 
you should write for Srila Prabhupada and you could also write today in honor of Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati. It is good for us to glorify the great Acharyas. We need to glorify them for our own purification. So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, he used to write a lot of articles and he encouraged also the devotees to write. And when they would write some article, he would simply look and see how many times does the word Krishna come there. And if the word Krishna was there on every page, you see, very good, print it. Hmm? That was the main thing. Sometimes people want, oh, don't say Krishna, just hi Krishna. <laughs> Some people like that, you know, there's even, <laughs> there's even a, some, there's a group in the, in, in the U.S. now, there's a group of people, they're practicing, they call it Krishna West. And they think, they say, oh, Krishna West means you shouldn't dress like a devotee. You shouldn't have a sika and you shouldn't wear dhotis and you shouldn't put on tea lag and you know you should just look like and not, they, they say this will be better for preaching. So one devotee said to me, he said, this is not Krishna West, he said, this is Krishna less. <laughs> Taking away Krishna from the whole thing. Prabhupada liked very much that when we were preaching, he wanted very much that we would also take up the culture wear the dhoti, shave the head, have a shika, put on neck beads and tea like and these things. Sometimes people, they want to hide these things. But we, we are proud of these things. We, we, we get purified by doing these things. Jai Jagannatha. So Srila, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada he uh, encouraged also his devotees to do these things and not only get, did he get them to do these things, he also got them to chant and he got them to chant 64 rounds a day. He said, if you don't chant 64 rounds a day, then you are considered fallen. Six, six, why 64 rounds? Well, 64 rounds is one lakh holy names, 100,000 names. So that was, that, well, that was considered, I think it comes from the Chaitanya Charitamrita or Chaitanya Bhagwat. it's mentioned there about chanting one lakh names. So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati encouraged the devotees like that, that they should do more chanting and at the same time, he also encouraged them to do preaching work. And he liked them to go out and preach. And he encouraged them, uh, even on days like Ekadasi, fasting day. There's a pastime, it said that one, on one occasion, the devotees were all observing Ekadasi and they were all doing full fast. So at that time an invitation came for a program and the devotees were saying, no, no, we're fasting, we cannot come today, no, we're fasting today, we're not going to come. But when Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati heard, he said, cook prasadam, feed the devotees and go for the program. He didn't like that devotees would just sit and fast. They thought preaching is more important than fasting. So this was his mood. Actually Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, as a young man, he used to do full fasting on Ekadasi, near Jal, every Ekadasi. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur instructed him, he said, this is not necessary in the Kali Yuga. 
This kind of austerity is not for the Kali Yuga. He said, you can, do, you can take some kind of prasadam. You don't need to do full fasting. So from that time on, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati would take some fruit on the Ekadasi day. He would observe like that. No grains, of course, but he would take some fruit. And in this way, he could uh, observe the Ekadasi. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he is described in the Pranam Mantras as being Rupanuga, a strict follower of Srila Rupa Goswami. Now Srila Rupa Goswami, his principle of his principle of renunciation, Nirbanda Krishna Sambande Yukta Vairagya Ujjate. So the principle of renunciation taught by Rupa Goswami was Yukta Vairagya, not Falgu Vairagya, and not nonsense, not uh, Markat Vairagya, but Yukta Vairagya, means renunciation in relationship to Krishna. So this was the principle taught by Rupa Goswami, that we don't need to give up anything, but we need to use it in the service of Krishna. Just like we're using technology, the microphone and the recording systems, these are all technology, but we're using it in the service of Krishna. So that is Yukta Vairagya. And similarly we use transportation for the service of Krishna. We know in the times of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, people would walk everywhere. And similarly, even in the times of Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, it was customary that sannyasis would walk everywhere. And they would walk barefooted. And they would wear only unstitched clothing. They would not wear any sewn cloth. They would not wear this kurta thing like I'm wearing, but it would all be just simply a piece of cloth. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he changed that. He was innovative. He would wear sewn cloth. He would put on the kurta sometimes, and even he had a coat made. And sometimes he would wear shoes also. And he would go to meet aristocratic European people who were there in Calcutta, particularly the government officials who were from England. Because at that time India was still ruled by the British people. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati would go to meet them. And he would not go walking. He would not go in rickshaw. He would go by car. He had a car, even, you know, a hundred, hundred years ago, he had his car, and he would go there to meet these people. But he was very strict about anybody else using the car. <laughs> you know, sometimes uh, people uh, they say, "Oh, I'm I'm not well. I think I need to go in the car to see the doctor." <laughs> so Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati would not allow that. He said, no, no. Car is for preaching. You want to go, you go to doctor. You don't go in the car. Car is not for that. And so sometimes uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati had to be quite strict with the devotees in the ashram. When they got the new building in Calcutta, as I said, it's a beautiful building, marble. Uh, at that time, the devotees were talking about different rooms. And they were eyeing, oh, I will have this room. Oh, this will be my office. This is a good place for me to be. And 
when Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati heard them talking in this way, then he was not pleased and he, he understood that their mood is just simply to enjoy and to be comfortable in the temple. So he predicted that there would be fire in this ashram. So he told our own founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada, this was in 19, must have been 1930, 34, 35, because they were at Radha Kund and there was some parikrama and the Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati said to our Srila Prabhupada, he said, if you ever get money, use it to print books. And Srila Prabhupada took that instruction very seriously. And whenever he got money, whenever people would come, want to give donation to Prabhupada, he would say, put it in my book fund. And that way he could use the money to print books. That was his Guru Maharaj's instruction to him personally. So Srila Prabhupada strictly followed. Actually Prabhupada said he only met his Guru Maharaj four or five times. He was initiated in 1933 and then in 1936 Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati left the world. So he did not get much opportunity to associate. He had met Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati initially in the year 1922. That was in Calcutta in a place at Uta Danga. If you go, you can go there today to the same place where Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati met Srila Prabhupada. Not only Srila Prabhupada but actually Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati met many of the people who went on to become his disciples and to become prominent in the Gaudiya Math, he met them, many of them joined his movement at this place, Uta Danga. And in the last few years, Iskand has been able to acquire this property. It's a very special place. And I encourage all of you, if you get the chance to go to Calcutta, then you should go to see this wonderful place where Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati resided for several years and where he first met our Bhaktivedanta Swami and where he met many other people who went on to become prominent sannyasis, people like Sridhar Maharaj, and Keshava Maharaj and Puri Maharaj, many of them, they came to Uta Danga and that was where they first met Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati. It's a small house, it's a small place, two floors like here, but it's been renovated in a very beautiful manner and we have a life-size life murti of Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati was, was very tall. He was like six feet tall. That's really big for a Bengali. <laughs> you know, Bengalis are usually smaller sized people. But he was really tall, six foot. And of course he was nice Tika Brahmachari throughout his life. He was very strict in associating with the opposite sex. Even as a student, you know, young men, when they're students, they're very attracted to young girls. Young men have a natural attraction. Young girls have natural attraction to young men, in the same way young men also have attraction to young girls. However, in the Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, when he was a student, he organized a brahmachari society and he recruited young men who made vows to be brahmachari. 
and there's a picture actually of all these young men and it was a brown and he was the the chairman of the it, when he was in the university like this he he organized this society brahmachari society but they said they said all of the other men got married except for the one bhakti siddhanta saraswati but everybody else they all got married <laughs> But Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he was strict Brahmachari, nothing. And he preached Krishna consciousness because he was so powerful, because he practiced this Brahmachari, so his determination was so strong. And when he would preach, he would preach very powerfully, very strongly. You know, sadhu, it is said, sadhu means one who can cut, right? To cut the knot of attachment. Just like Srila Prabhupada said, when he first met Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, Bhakti Siddhanta uh, Sarasati was preaching about Lord Chaitanya. And he said, you're a nice young man. Why don't you take up the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and spread the Sankirtan movement? And Srila Prabhupada had just walked in. He just walked off the street and they'd never met before. But immediately he was being challenged, told, Why don't you teach the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? And Prabhupada, Prabhupada was dressed in his khadi because he was a follower of Gandhi. It was 1922 and Gandhi was preaching and he was telling the Indian people, wear khadi, don't wear the synthetic, don't wear this stuff imported from England. Wear the khadi, wear the cloth made on the handlooms in the Indian villages. So Srila Prabhupada said he was a follower of Gandhi and he was in his khadi and then Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati saying, you sh why don't you teach the message of Lord Chaitanya? So Prabhupada said, oh no, we have to get independence first. When we are get independence, then we can teach the message of Lord Chaitanya. We are not free yet. We have to get our freedom. We have to get independence. Then only we can spread Lord Chaitanya's movement. But Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati said, No! Wrong! <laughs> he said, You're wrong! We cannot wait for some political adjustment. The message of Krishna consciousness is so important. It cannot wait for any kind of adjustment in the political structure. And Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati then went on, to explain the importance of Lord Chaitanya's movement and how it has nothing to do with time or place. It doesn't matter what is the situation, wherever we are, the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is meant for everyone at all time, in all places. So Srila Prabhupada describes how he was very impressed when he first met Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. Initially, he had been reluctant to go and see. He thought, oh, just another sadhu, just another Babaji. He'd already seen so many Babajis who don't do anything. They don't preach. They don't do anything. They just only want bhiksha, give bhikshu, like that. So. He was reluctant to go, but his friend told him, no, this, this man is a real sadhu, you have to meet him. And so Prabhupada went there and he met him and he understood, yes, he is a genuine sadhu. He is a real holy man. But at that time Prabhupada said, I was, I was a young man, I just married and we had a few, I already had children. I could not take up immediately the message which he was teaching. So that was 1922 and then later on, 1933, Prabhupada was in 
Allahabad and at that time the Gaudiya Math established a center in Allahabad and they came to a place where Srila Prabhupada had a shop. Prabhupada was a chemist and he had some medicines and he was marketing his medicines. So the Gaudiya Math people came there and they said, are you a Bhaicharande? They said, we heard you are a very pious man. We want to meet you. We want to tell you we have opened one temple. We would like to invite you. Please come. And so then Prabhupada heard more and then he understood, oh, this is a man I met. I met him in 1922, 11 years ago. <laughs> Again, he has come into my life. And so Srila Prabhupada began to go. Later on he got initiation. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati initiated many disciples. He had thousands of disciples. And he encouraged all of them to preach the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu constantly. If one of them would go and distribute even a little paper and collect a few paisa, he would be very pleased. He would say, well done. He didn't, he didn't like his disciples to just go to rich people. If, the, if they would just go to rich people and come back with a lot of money, you think, no, that why you only go to the rich people? You should preach to the common people as well. Don't just go only to the rich people. And if they came back with some rice and some bananas and then a little money as well, then he'd say, oh, very good, you have done very well. Like that, they would go out and they would do, collect bhiksha, they would collect some donation to maintain the temple. So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati was very revolutionary in encouraging the devotees to become Krishna conscious. He wanted everyone to take up this mission. He would come to the temples and if he saw they, have, they had money, they were quite a wealthy temple, he would take the money and he would enlist some, he would get the, the, some artists to come and he would ask them, make some dioramas, make some exhibits of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. And they would have a big exhibition and in this way people could come and learn about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And if the devotees would complain, they'd say, Oh Guru Maharaj, you're spending all the money, there'll be no money. He would say, good, you have to go out and preach. If you just keep money, if you're just a rich temple, you won't go out and preach. You just sit comfortably and let people come and give donations. That's not what we want. We have to go out and meet the Jaghai and the Madhai and deliver them and give them the holy name. So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati wanted so much to see this Krishna consciousness movement preached everywhere. As I said, the principle of Rupa Goswami. Huh? We, we offer our respects to Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. Sri Varsavanavi Devi Dayitaya Kripajaya Krishna Sambandha Vigyana Dayane Prabhave Namaha. This is the initiated name which Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati got from his Diksha Guru. His Diksha Guru was Gorki Shodas Babaji. Bhakti Vinod Thakur was his father. So his father said, you have to get initiation from somebody else. I am your father, I cannot give you Diksha. You have to get from... So, so then Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, who? Huh? There's nobody. They're all bogus. They're all hodgepodge. 
But Bhakti Vinod Thakur recommended Gorky Shodas Babaji, this man is good. But he was illiterate. But Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he was scholar. He was a great scholar. When he was a young man, Calcutta University invited him to become the professor in astrology at the university. But he refused. He said, no, I don't want anything to do with mundane education. This mundane education. Just people become more attached to the body. He said, we should distribute spiritual knowledge, not avidya, but vidya, transcendental knowledge. So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati refused that kind of position. He was only interested in the divine activities, the godly activities. He didn't want to be a rich man. He didn't want to be comfortable in the material world. He sacrificed everything for the service of Krishna. And he encouraged his devotees also to take up Krishna consciousness. So by establishing his Gaudiya Mat, he wanted that the devotees would make more and more temples and print more and more books. However, after his departure, somehow things didn't work out so well and the devotees had difficulties to get along with each other. We actually see when there's a great Acharya, after he departs, then it's very inauspicious time. I saw myself when Srila Prabhupada left the world, that it became very difficult for us. When Srila Prabhupada was with us, we knew that Prabhupada is there. If we have any problem, any dispute, we just go to Prabhupada and Prabhupada would resolve everything. But after Prabhupada departed, then we were all confused. What are we going to do? What, what's the solution? And similarly, when Lord Krishna was present, when Lord Krishna departed from the world, then Arjuna lost all of his power. And Arjuna was defeated by a gang of cowherd men. He was supposed to protect Krishna's wives. After Krishna departed, Krishna's queens of Dwarka were given to the care of Arjuna. But he was unable to protect them. And a gang of infidels came and Arjuna could not defeat them. So after the great personalities leave the world, it becomes very difficult for us. We become confused sometimes about our duty. So similarly, when Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada left this world, then there was also confusion. Actually, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati wanted that no one person should become the guru or the acharya over everyone. He said, there should be many. There should be many spiritual teachers. There should be also, he said, GBC. There should be... Jai. Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati wanted that there should be a body set up, a committee who would organize everything and who would make the arrangements for the running of the society. Not that it was all to be left to one person to decide everything. However, after he departed, then there was some confusion about what was his desire and the devotees argued and they felt and somehow they could not get along. Some devotees were saying this devotee should be the head and other devotees were saying no, this devotee should be the head. And in this way there were two groups. One group was based at Mayapur and the other group was based at Calcutta. 
<laughs> you know, and they had different visions and different ideas and they could not resolve everything properly. And so gradually the Gaudiya divided into so many different groups. Mm -hmm. So that is the situation today, that it remains divided. Although they do try to come together and work together, no, but still they are separate societies. So our own Srila Prabhupada saw the situation and he tried, he tried to work, but eventually he had to start his own society. And he did it in the Western world. He went to the, the West, of course, and began ISKCON there. And then later on came back to India and preached also. And now the preaching is going on so well there in India. We have so many nice centers, wonderful centers, very big congregations, very big programs, preaching. I attended the Calcutta Rathiatra. It was incredible, very impressive. Thousands of people. And of course the Chief Minister, Mamata Banerjee, she comes every year to bless the festival and to inaugurate the Rathiatra. And uh, we had, they have the prayed one day and then they have seven days program in a, in a ground. They, they have a big ground where they have many pavilions and for seven days and nights there's constant programs of kirtan and drama and questions and answers and prasadam distribution and so many things going on for seven days and the whole of Calcutta knows about this festival. In fact, people come from far away just to attend the Rathiatra and the, the companies, different companies and businesses there, they will put up big posters in the city about Rathiatra. They will put their company name on it, they will sponsor it and they will praise the Rathiatra. So Rathiatra is a very big festival there in Calcutta. They prayed one day, seven days at the ground and then another prayed to go back. So nine days program with thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people every day. And of course all the devotees are fully engaged, very busy. And we also purchased the land at Prabhupada's birthplace, the birthplace of Srila Prabhupada that's also been acquired there. It's very important. Prabhupada had written about that. And generally, just like the birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is important. And similarly, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, his birthplace is there in Jagannath Puri. When you go to Jagannath Puri, you will see there's one Gaudiya Mat temple on the main road. As you come out, as you come out of Puri, out of the main temple of Jagannath, and you go down to the Gundicha temple, on the way you will see there's one Gaudiya Mat temple. And that is the birthplace of Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada. He was born there. Of course at that time it was the home of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, but he appeared there at that place. Now they have a temple there. So similarly we have also Prabhupada's birthplace in Calcutta and in the future a temple will be built there. Right now we've just acquired the land and we have also this Utadanga place where Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati met with Prabhupada and many other devotees and where he lived. It's a very wonderful very special place to be to go and see and we have also nearby there's the place called Panihati 
which is the place of Raghunath Das Goswami, where he got the mercy of Lord Nityananda. So all of these places are just in Calcutta. Panihati is just on the outskirts of Calcutta, and it's a very important place. We have a temple there now. By the grace of His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj, Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj was able to acquire the property there. And it's a, there's a temple, it's a, a Devi temple, Durga temple, but we've got adjoining land where we've put Gornitai, made a nice temple for Gornitai. So that is right on the bank of the Ganga and Raghava Pandit's house, Raghava Pandit who was a great devotee of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his residence is just nearby. It is said Lord Chaitanya appears in the home of Raghava Pandit. His Avirbhav potency. By his Avirbhav, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would appear in five different places. So one of these five places where Lord Chaitanya would appear was the home of Raghava Pandit. And that Raghava Pandit's home is just two minutes walk from our temple there in Panihati. So, so many wonderful places and wonderful things to be seen. Although you go to Calcutta and we think, oh, what a horrible place, it's so noisy and so crowded and so dirty, and, but there's so many amazing, wonderful, spiritual places to be seen and to be visited. And just to hear about them is purifying. So Panihati, of course, every year we celebrate Shira Dahi festival. The Shiradai festival takes place every year, Panihati, even today. The devotees will go there and do Harinam and distribute also Shiradahi. And thousands of people come. And it's a very nice festival. So this way our Krishna consciousness movement is developing more and more. So many temples coming up. Hmm. We want, just like in Penang, here in Malaysia, now in Penang, they're having four temples. <laughs> and so more temples mean more preaching, more devotees. More devotees, happier devotees. So, you can see our Krishna consciousness movement expanding. Although we had the lockdown and you know, some way activities had to be restricted and stopped. But the devotees took advantage of the lockdown to do more preaching. To just like the education, schools and classes were online, so ISKCON also went online. And had so many classes, so many seminars, so many programs online. We make use of everything for the service of Krishna. All right, so are there any questions, any comment, anything? Any complaints? <laughs> Why uh, disappearance of nature is called a festival where we supposed to use the the disappearance of an acharya is called a festival. Yeah, we say Tirubhav Mahotsava. It's a festival because the acharya is going back to Godhead. Right? He's leaving the world to go back to his eternal lila in the spiritual sky. So yes, it's a festival. When Dhruva Maharaj went back to, when he went to Dhruva Loka, the airplane came to Badrik Ashram. Dhruva Maharaj was there in Badrik Ashram. And then the airplane came, the men to take him to Dhruva Loka. And so Dhruva Maharaj, you know, he offered his obeisances to everyone at Badrik Ashram. He circumambulated the airplane. And they got in the airplane and the demigods were all shouting flowers 
on Dhruva Maharaj as he went back to Godhead. Yes, it's a festival. Jiva va Marava Sadhu. The Sadhu doesn't die. He, he, he just goes some other place to preach the holy name. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote the poem, he said, He reasons ill who thinks a Vaishnava dies when thou art living still in sound. A Vaishnava dies to live and in living tries to spread the holy name around. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur composed that beautiful verse describing the activities of the devotee. So we don't lament. Of course we lament that we feel the loss. We're losing the association. But at the same time we're happy that he is going to his eternal Leela. He's going to join Krishna. So it's a festival. Yeah, it's a Mahotsava. We celebrate it. And it's an opportunity for us to glorify them and to speak about their wonderful activities, their preaching activities and how they dedicated their lives for the service of Krishna and how they gave up everything to go back to be with Krishna. So yes, it's a Mahotsava festival. We had a big crowd at Jagannath Mandir at lunchtime today. Srila Prabhupada was very strict about these things that we have to do it in the midday. One time the devotees were saying, well, we're going to do it at night when everybody comes. But Prabhupada said, doesn't matter everybody comes or not, you have to do it the midday. You have to have the program, you have to celebrate them. So, and Prabhupada personally went in the kitchen and cooked the feast and made a feast to offer because he wanted to worship his Guru Maharaj. And that was the, the procedure, that's the proper way that you should do it in the midday. Of course we can speak about the, 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 the glories of these devotees at any time, in the night or in the day, it's all absolute. But the actual worship is done in the midday. Yes. Any other question? Yes, Prabhu. Maharaj, can we attach the appearance day and disappearance day to the devotees of them? Or only certain categories of sanctuary? Appearance days and disappearance days of devotees? Yes, you can. It's up to the individuals. Just like there was one couple, they came to the Jagannath Mandir today. The lady was observing the disappearance of her husband. Her, her good husband had departed from the world on the same day of the disappearance day of Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati. So she came to the temple today and she sponsored the feast because it's a day in which her husband departed from the world. So she wanted to sponsor. We were observing the departure of Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, but she herself was celebrating, remembering her own husband that he departed that day. And she wanted, in honor of her husband, she donated to cover the cost of the feast for the devotee prasadam. So, yes, you can celebrate for devotees also appearance and disappearance. Young devotees have birthdays, right? We have a birthday cake for them. We celebrate for them. Their birthday. So th there's nothing wrong in that. Glorifying the devotees, celebrating their appearance and their disappearance also, remembering them. It's nice, very good. 
So we see the Vaishnava calendar is there and on the Vaishnava calendar you can see many different names, different events which were brought to our attention. So you can celebrate these different events according to the, the means of the temple, according to the interest of all the devotees. You can celebrate each and every one of these things. Prabhupada said you can have a festival every day. Every day he said you can have a different festival. And he was giving instructions when he was there in Los Angeles in the beginning of our movement, he would instruct the devotees different festivals every day they would do. Can we say yes, of course. Okay. In both, both days your appearance day. Hmm? <laughs> yes, we can say that. Your birthday is appearance day. You appeared, right? Some, some people's appearances will be more significant than others. But yes, it's all appearance. We don't make any distinction. Your appearance, your, our disappearance. <laughs> Just different terminology. But the meaning is the same. Different language. But the same meaning. We don't mind. Yes, any, any other question? Okay, so thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada Ki, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki, Gaur Premanande. <laughs> Ahora que el